Happy Little Games. Pro Wrestling and Video Games. It's a match made in heaven and a match made in hell. The hell being is, I can't get enough. There is something oh so satisfying about the over-the-top theatrics mixed in with the athletic competition. Yes, Poindexter, I know it's not real competition, so you might as well stop typing those comments right now. All you've got to do is mix in a little bit of wrestling with some good old-fashioned video game goodness, and you've got a recipe for success. Usually. We've had our fair share of wrestling video games, but the franchise that started out over 30 years ago was the one we are going to take a look at today, which is Fire Pro Wrestling. This iconic franchise was mostly relegated to Japan for a number of years, but has recently been unleashed on the North American market in a big way. The iconic game series has been seen at various systems from the PC Engine, to the Game Boy, to the Arcade, and finally the PS4. What major controversy surrounded one of these games? Let's find out as we take a look at the history of Fire Pro Wrestling. In the mid-1980s when Hulkamania was running wild, so were video games. The arcades featured a number of excellent wrestling titles in the 80s such as Matt Mania and Wrestle War, but we also received some stinkers such as WrestleMania for the NES. Growing up, I loved this game and thought it was fantastic being able to play as Hulk Hogan and Bam Bam Bigelow. Now, I don't know if I was on drugs, drunk, uh. or just a bit of a moron, uh. because this game is terrible. Anybody who says otherwise needs to take off their rose-colored Coca-Cola thick glasses and have another look. Over in Japan, game developer Masato Masuda was looking to create a brand new wrestling game for NEC's shiny new PC engine. He had started the video game company Human Entertainment, whose philosophy was simple. Trigger human emotions, making humans more realistic in games. He was no stranger to developing successful wrestling games as he was the brains behind the iconic NES game Pro Wrestling, which ended up selling 1.4 million copies. Pro Wrestling actually started out life as a port of Matt Mania, but for unknown reasons, Mr. Masuda decided against it. Some similarities between the two still exist, such as the control scheme and the roving cameraman. Despite its success, Mr. Masuda was not happy with the controls. Pro Wrestling feature the same grapple wins technique gameplay as Fire Pro, but there is no timing element involved, so you could just use an auto fire controller and win every time. It was my desire to remedy this issue, which led me to the conclusion that implementing a timing mechanic was the only solution. Mr. Masuda, being a true fan of professional wrestling, wanted to uphold the philosophy of his company by making a realistic wrestling video game. Rumor has it, he began studying matches bringing cases of videotapes to the human offices, often re-watching them until the tapes broke. He wanted the controls to be simple and easy to pick up like pro wrestling, but wanted it to feel like a real pro wrestling contest. He wanted to implement other things that were missing from pro wrestling into his new game, which was stamina and limb damage. Finally, he wanted to add submission holds. People were complaining about the lack of submission holds in pro wrestling, so I wanted to make sure they were included in Fire Pro, but just including them wouldn't provide much fun, so I got to thinking, what's the point of submission holds in wrestling? This led me to one of the theories behind pro wrestling, that of concentrated attacks on a single body part to prevent the opponent using it effectively. In order for this to work in the game, I needed to include another perimeter, apart from stamina, so arms and legs could have damage inflicted on them. The last thing on the list that Mr. Masuda wanted to add was blood, which caused the character's stamina recovery to be greatly hampered. 
The isometric camera angle used in the game was popularized by All Japan Pro Wrestling. Fire Pro Wrestling Combination Tag was released for the PC Engine in 1989. The first time you play this game or any other Fire Pro game, you will notice the isometric viewpoint of the ring. This was first seen in Championship Wrestling by Epic Software and helps differentiate itself from other pro wrestling games at the time. The other is the fictional roster which is clearly based on actual in-ring grapplers. The Road Warriors, Bad News Allen, Antonio Inoki, Bruiser Brody, Stan Hansen, and more are all featured. Not only do you get to portray these real life warriors, but these movesets are accurate as well, including their signature finishers. Clearly, copyright laws were not running wild in the land of the rising sun, so some video game developers had a field day. I'm looking directly at you, Konami. The controls, though, are what sets it apart from every other pro wrestling game at the time. Everything is timing based and not button mashing. This brought a whole new strategic element to these types of games. Just like in a real professional wrestling match, psychology is used to gradually build a match based on the logic of the moves performed and the damage that it does. Fire Pro follows these same rules making sure you weaken your opponent first before you are allowed to pull off the more powerful moves. For anyone who has played the Fire Pro series, knows that the controls are very intuitive. For example, pushing down and pressing a button can perform a pile driver. Pushing up and pressing a button can perform a suplex. Stamina is also a factor now as well. You and your opponent will both get weaker as the match goes on. As I mentioned, Blood is also included, which greatly reduces your ability to recover. Other things that were included to make it more authentic are submissions, disqualifications, and rope breaks. There aren't many modes available, but you do get one-on-one -on -one and tag team, which allows two players to compete against each other. The tag team mode has been refined to include interference by the other player who will attempt to break up the pin. The game was a huge hit for the company and solidified Mr. Masuda as the king of wrestling video games. A spin-off title by the name of HAL Wrestling was released for the Game Boy in 1990. This started out by Human as more or less a straight up port of pro wrestling for the beloved green screen handheld. The basic engine from pro wrestling was translated over including moves, dives, and suplexes all of which are found in pro wrestling. However, this included an updated fictionalized roster that featured wrestlers from New Japan and All Japan, such as Vader, the Road Warriors, and Bruiser Brody. Even though everything is there from pro wrestling, it just doesn't quite feel right. The animations are choppy and there's a lot of flicker when the characters are performing certain moves. It never quite achieved pro wrestling glory on the Game Boy, but it's not too bad if you can look past these faults. In 1991, Mr. Masuda and his team spent two years refining the engine found in Fire Pro Wrestling Combination Tag and released Fire Pro Wrestling's second bout for the PC Engine. A total of 20 wrestlers were now available including unlicensed versions of Hulk Hogan, Ricky Choshu, Jushin Thunder Liger, The Great Muda, Vader, The Ultimate Warrior, and more. There are even hidden characters that you have to face such as Luthez. Along with the expanded roster, 
the wrestlers have received several new moves. The animation for each move has also been greatly increased. New modes were also introduced in addition to the exhibition and tag team modes such as Super Tournament, which is basically a 16 match affair. You also have World Championship Series, which is basically the single player league. You have to complete a number of these to reach three hidden bosses. There is also a code to allow a female referee to be used. Also in 1991, the game made its debut on the Super Famicom entitled, predictably enough, Super Fire Pro Wrestling. This would be the biggest and best Fire Pro game up to that point, and some would consider it a proper sequel to Combination Tag. For starters, the timing system was even more refined which made a really good game even better. The roster has been increased as well as the number of moves per wrestler. Also, instead of an individual finishing move, each wrestler has a number of signature moves as well. The graphics have also been given a slight boost over the PC Engine, but the animation definitely got kicked up a notch. There are a number of modes as well, including the standard single and tag team, but you also have a five-man tag team elimination tournament. The open league mode makes its return. If you're still struggling with the timing, there is a tutorial mode included. One person who did not appreciate all the extras this game had to offer was Giant Baba. He was none too pleased at having his unlicensed image in the game and demanded that they no longer use his likeness in future games. In 1992, Thunder Pro Wrestling Ratsuden was released for the Sega Mega Drive. For some strange reason, this is not based off of the Super Famicom version, but an earlier build from the PC Engine. You had a roster of 12 wrestlers available, all based on actual US and Japanese grapplers. While the graphics are decent, the animation is not quite as smooth. Something that is a bit different about this version is that finishers are now displayed in the form of bars at the bottom of the screen. Since you now have a limited amount of finishers available, you have to strategize your match instead of spamming the most powerful move over and over. As far as modes go, there is Exhibition, Tag Team, and World Championship Series. This was actually due to be released in North America as Jesse the Body Ventura Wrestling Superstars but was cancelled. The actual concept of the game caused a falling out between Vince McMahon and Jesse Ventura. Mr. McMahon did not want Ventura doing the project so he walked out. A ROM was leaked online so you can download it and try it out for yourself. Nineteen ninety two saw the release of Fire Pro Wrestling three Legend Bout for the PC Engine. Mr. Masuda considered this to be the true follow up to the original nineteen eighty nine classic. Looking at the features, it's no wonder. The roster included thirty two wrestlers, which was the most for any Fire Pro game up until that point. As to be expected, the controls have been fine-tuned perfectly with everything balanced just right. Between 50 and 100 new moves were added and again the animation was improved upon. The game changer of it all was the debut of the Creator Wrestler mode which has since become a staple in the Fire Pro Wrestling franchise. 
If the 32 wrestlers weren't enough to choose from and you were fluent in Japanese, you could assemble your very own character. Not only can you choose the physical aspect of your character along with his moveset, but also the logic so that the character wrestles just like he does in real life. The typical match options are available here, but there is now a championship league for you to play through, which unlocks new secret legend characters. Nineteen ninety two also saw the release of Super Fire Pro Wrestling two for the Super Famicom. If you had experienced Fire Pro Wrestling three final bout for the PC engine, then you were bound to be a bit disappointed with this Super Famicom release. For some unknown reason, the roster was only expanded to twenty five wrestlers as opposed to the thirty two found in the latest PC engine release. There have also been minor improvements as far as the animation and graphics go, but nothing too major. The much beloved Creator Wrestler mode was also missing. There are a few new secret characters that you have to face, including Tiger Mask and Dynamite Kid, among others. There is only one new match type which is unlockable, and that is the Handicap Match which was previously seen in Thunder Pro Wrestling Retsuden. The most notable feature to be introduced in this game is the critical. This is basically a knockout move which will end the match at any time. Super powerful moves such as Vader's Powerbomb or Stan Hansen's Lariat could deliver these at an alarming rate. Another year, another Fire Pro Wrestling game. 1993 brought about the release of Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3 for the Super Famicom. Mr. Masuda stepped in to oversee the project and this brought about the best Fire Pro Wrestling game to date. This took everything that made Legend Bout on the PC Engine great and made it even better. The roster was absolutely massive with 64 wrestlers in total which was the most seen in any professional wrestling game. The graphics look fantastic and the animation once again is just a little bit smoother. Aside from the roster and additional moves though, there isn't much in the way of new content over Legend Bout. Two major additions were introduced in the series for the Super Famicom and that was a brand new sorting system which allows you to group wrestlers either by affiliation or style of wrestling. And finally, the much beloved edit mode makes its Super Famicom debut. After the release of this game, Mr. Masuda would take a backseat role as a producer for all future games. Once again, the game was a huge seller and introduced a ton of players to the Fire Pro series. Unfortunately, a lot of these newer players were still having trouble getting the timing down for the moves. A few months later, the company would release Super Fire Pro Wrestling Easy Type, which was a version of the game that made the timing a bit more forgiving and decreased the difficulty in the process. Not quite content with resting on their laurels after having released the series on the PC Engine, Super Famicom, and the Mega Drive, 
Fire Pro Wrestling Gaiden Blazing Tornado was released in the arcades in 1994. This was developed by the same team that brought us Thunder Pro Wrestling Rasuden, so graphically it looks fantastic. The isometric viewpoint and timing based grappling system are present, but it's more reminiscent of Capcom's Muscle Bomber or Saturday Night Slam Masters. The game is more of a button masher and also requires half circle movements on the joystick to perform special moves similar to Muscle Bomber. The roster size has also been decreased to 8 but the sprites themselves are massive and well animated. The controls are where it kind of falls apart as it doesn't know if it wants to be an arcade game or a simulation as found in the previous Fire Pro games. It ends up leaning slightly towards arcade but it never really comes together in my opinion. A straight up port for the Sega Saturn was also released in Japan. Nineteen ninety four saw the release of the first women's Fire Pro title, Fire Pro Joshi All Star Dream Slam for the Super Famicom. The game was also fully licensed by All Japan and features twenty five female combatants. The roster includes wrestlers such as Bol Nakano, Akira Hokuto, and Aja Kong. You have your standard match types such as Exhibition. Open League, Tournament, Elimination, and the Battle Royal. The controls are typical Fire Pro and everything looks, sounds, and feels great. In 1994, we were treated to perhaps one of the greatest wrestling games available for the Super Famicom, which was Super Fire Pro Wrestling Special. Since Mr. Masuda was only producing, young designer Goichi Suda had taken the reins of the game's development, arguing with Mr. Masuda that the one thing missing from the overall Fire Pro franchise was human emotion. He wanted the player to really feel the emotion and experience the drama of becoming a professional wrestler. The graphics and animation are fantastic and were the best produced up until this point. Storyline wise though, you take control of Morio Smith who was an up and coming rookie that goes through the trials and tribulations step by step facing various challenges and tragic moments of his young wrestling career. This is a spoiler for anybody who doesn't want to know how the game ends, so click off if you plan on playing through it yourself. After winning the world title, your character cannot take the pressure anymore and commits suicide at the end of the game. I can recall importing this game back in 1994 and was blown away by it. I couldn't quite follow along what was going on with the story, but the suicide itself was pretty obvious. As I played through the game, I came across the final boss, which was a guy in a robe who I didn't recognize. Being a Ric Flair fan, I couldn't believe they would actually put him on a higher pedestal in the game than Hulk Hogan or some other Japanese star. Rick. And that is going to wrap up part one on the history of Fire Pro Wrestling. There are still quite a few games to cover and I plan on covering each and every one. So if you've enjoyed this, come back for part two coming soon to a YouTube screen near you. Special thanks goes out to Top Hat Gaming Man for recording some audio for this video. 
Be sure to check out his channel at Top Hat Gaming Man on YouTube for all your retro gaming needs. Yeah! I wanted to give a special shout out to the website Critical Club, which is an excellent resource for all Fire Pro Wrestling games. I also wanted to give a big shout out to Shadowmaster on the forum for scanning in the various Fire Pro guidebooks. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thanks, everybody, for watching.